All right, good morning, everyone. Kenneth Price again, Sunday, November 12th this time, on board with Jody Marcy, Greg, our regular psychiatric sobriety.com, our Sunday morning Zoom call, my five minute introduction, uh, because these are being recorded to YouTube. I want to do a little bit of formality and give an introduction. So, psychiatric sobriety was a brainchild, and it came out of my own direct experience with psychiatry and with pharmaceuticals and with addictions. I, I was um, uh, wise enough or, or, or grace enough to, to start the 12 steps as a very young man. And when I had to eventually get off all of my psychiatric meds, it was clear to me um, that getting off psych meds is, is no different than getting off drugs and alcohol because you have to have a spiritual awakening to do either one of them, according to Bill W. Um, if anybody can do it without a spiritual awakening, I'm all ears. Um, we have to rise above the battleground of mental illness, just like I had to rise above the battleground of addictions. You know, And that's what this ministry is all about. That's what we do every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time, 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 noon Eastern time. We get together and all of us rise above the battleground of our mental illness narratives because... Just like the 12 steps, we can't do this alone. And spirit speaks through each one of us. And uh, so this is just kind of a hybrid ministry, a, a hybrid support group, uh, whatever it is, uh, whatever it needs to be is what it is um, on that particular Sunday. Mostly we, we come here to share experience, strength and hope. If we need to express, we support one another. Now, because I have said the word psychiatry and because I am posting these on YouTube, I always do disclaimers. Um, you know, and I have to include this in my disclaimer. I was listening to a, an interview. Uh, Rick Archer does interviews uh, at a program called Buddha at the Gas Pump. And you know who came on board? One of his interviews. I needed to hear this. An enlightened psychiatrist. She was a psychiatrist and she was enlightened. All right. Humble pie for Kenneth Price. Listen, folks, um, when I say psychiatric sobriety, there is nothing wrong with psychiatry. If that, that woman who was a psychiatrist was, was rocking the casbah and she was helping many, many people. All right. However, in my story, I took psychiatry, you know, on like I took on drugs and alcohol. There's nothing wrong with a glass of wine at night. Two, three, four, it becomes a problem. Well, that was how I treated psychiatry. Oh, look, these antidepressant pills work. I'll just start taking more. Okay. Uh, anyway, long story short, I had to get off all my pills. Um, best decision I ever made. It was very, very difficult. So I want to support others who are also making that decision. But as far as the disclaimers go, we're not here to protest psychiatry. We're not here to tell anybody they need to get off their pills. We're not here to say anything's wrong with psychiatry. All right. We're here to unbelieve our mental illness narratives. Mm -hmm. We're going to empower ourselves by unbelieving in the dream characters that are having the mental illnesses in the first place. Very, very long, very winded. There's my, my introduction. Because it's a ministry. And because, uh, because it has to happen through grace. I start off each, pro each one of these with the healer's prayer, which goes like this. We are here only to be truly helpful. And we are here to represent him or her who sent us. We do not have to worry about what to say or what to do because he or she who sent us will direct us. We are content to be wherever he or she wishes. Knowing he or she goes there with us and we will be healed as we let him or her teach us how to heal. Okay, I got that wrapped up in four minutes. Uh, who wants to start us off? What's been going on? Um, Generally, don't come in here with, with a lot of small talk. We come in here sharing how it's been, you know, a very, very uh, powerful week for us. Because that's what it takes to get off these meds, you know. One of the things that happened when I started, you know, facing life on life's terms is, is law in, in removing all these, these chemicals from my body. This long buried trauma was coming to the surface. And we've talked about this before. Most of us have been under the narrative that as soon as the as soon as the trauma comes up in, in our body, you know, the body responds in, in many different ways. But we've been trained to think something's going wrong. We've been trained to indoctrinated to think it's it's a problem that's got to be fixed. 
Now, most of us that come on board here have tried different modalities to fix it, change it, heal it. And so we, we, we all reach a point where the only thing that's left is to allow it. That's really where the magic happens. When the only thing that's left is to allow it, and, and that's where I want to meet people. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna allow it together. But the reason I want to meet people there is because I know what's on the other side of allowing it. Everything that we were trying to attempt with the healing and the fixing and the changing is on the other side of allowance. And it's a very narrow passage. It's a bridge from one side to the other. So, you know, maybe if I have some role, it's it's to be an escort or or, or maybe to just assure people that uh, it's safe to cross this bridge. That which didn't kill me made me stronger. But, but it nearly it, kills you. It just about kills you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, yeah, I, I wouldn't be saying this with conviction, you know, yeah. if if it hadn't. The reason I want to meet people there is is once you start on that bridge, I get to I get to to to, to kind of whisper in your ear, notice. Notice these these, you know, just just slow down and notice there are some synchronicities that wouldn't have happened otherwise. Yeah. And 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 once a person begins to notice, it's like the training wheels. Eventually, you can take the training wheels off because we will, you know, but you need someone to kind of point out to you. Have you have you noticed the synchronicity? Right. I, you know, Course in Miracles calls them miracles. You know, some people call it guidance. But if you've seen, you know, all the graphics that I do for this ministry, you know, one of my favorites is footprints in the sand. Mm -hmm. And and Marcy and I were just talking, um, you know, this week. Hand in the dark. It's a frightening thing to, to, to cross that bridge because everything in, in our you know belief system, especially if some of us have been raised in fear-based religions, don't go there. You'll be gobbled up. Uh, you know, it's, it's play it safe. Um, it takes courage to do this and 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 I'm all I'm all on board for for the courageous because that's courageous and courageous is contagious. You know what? And I just I just came up with a title for the Zoom call. Courageous is contagious. I've talked for too long. Whose turn is it next? Not me. Marcy, how's Portland going for you? Did you make it over to Unity and uh, to the uh, Miracles Distribution Center? Um. Oh. Well, I made it to uh, the Unity Course in Miracles study group. So um, that was mm -hmm. pretty cool. Um, I've only been once. I wasn't able to go this uh, last week, but um, I'm, I'm planning on going tomorrow. So, yeah, um, I love Portland. <laughs> I love it. Um, so you were talking about um, the hand in the dark, and this is kind of cool. So last week after the Zoom meeting, I was taking a walk and I was re-listening to the, the call because I hear like so much good stuff. Like I'm on the call, but for some reason when I re-listen, it's like, oh. So I'm walking along and exactly when it got to the part of the recording where you were talking about a hand reaching out in the dark, I looked down and found another hairband. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, really? <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, you know, I think something I'd really like to share this week is um, I had the opportunity to be available for um, a couple people reached out to me um, this week. And uh, you know what? It really... Like my heart just felt this little spark of joy and sorry, we didn't talk about anything like major, but you know, these people, I imagine in their mind, cause we sort of talked about it, like 
I'm going to burden you by reaching out to you or, you know, I don't want to ask for help or, but really like, I don't feel like I gave them anything, but they gave me like this huge gift. And it was just, I don't know, just something about it. Just, I like literally, like we were just laughing about stupid stuff. And I like felt my heart just like, just, uh, it felt good. Like I could feel it. Like I haven't even been able to feel my heart. And it was just like, it felt like amazing. It was so awesome. Mm -hmm. You know what? Um, something that kind of hit me this week too, is, um, I was listening to, um, Keith Kavanaugh and something he said, you know, was really kind of what I've been looking at recently. He said, um, he's talking about working on our spirituality and enlightenment. And so what he said was, once you're on the journey, you've lost the plot because salvation is right here, right now. Oh, that's good. That's true. That's true. It's yeah. not somewhere else. It's not far off. Uh-uh. Go ahead, though. I'm sorry. He said, no, you're good, Greg. He said, if you're doing something to become enlightened, you've missed the point. And I'm like, mm. I like that. Mm. So I'm sitting with that. And I just want to put a big thank you mm -hmm. out to the universe, to the people that reached out to me. It really touched my heart. So You've been good to me this week. Yeah, I don't know if that's who you're talking about, but it really, you've helped me a lot. Yes, Greg, you're definitely. And I can't wait to hear your big news again because it just, I can't hear yeah. it enough. I just yeah, I get to go to New York. That's the thing. My my homeopath yesterday, she said she wasn't going to come down here to film, but we're going to, um, she's, she's paying for it. And uh I guess I want to tell you, there, there's a lot happening in the world of homeopathy right now. Um, so I'm going to be part of that, a lot of that more than I thought I would, and without a degree. So I'm going to I'm gonna get to uh, work with um, my homeopath for people with benzodiazepine withdrawal with flowers. So that's, that's, that's big for me. So, and... Um, I found out there's a study, a homeopathic study in Belgium now, double bind study about helping people get off um, benzodiazepines. Um, and um, so it's getting to the point where there's pretty soon there's not going to be a lot of reason for psychiatric drug withdrawal. So because of what what was happening, and I get to be a part of that. So. Oh, there's Rihanna. Rihanna. Okay. So things are happening for me. I, you know, I just wanted to force a path out of this, make things happen, but things are just happening. That's what I found out. So about about two, I don't know how long it was two or three years ago. I interviewed a woman. I interviewed David Hoffmeister's wife, Slava Love, so I can rest in love. I it's got on my YouTube channel. And the reason I wanted to interview her because she had a poignant you know, definitive, one of those, you know, rare spiritual awakenings, you know, those where you see burning bush. I don't know. Anyway, you have to listen. But anyway, in the in the voice, she was on psych meds and the voice told her to begin tapering. But one of the reasons I wanted her on on the the call, you know, recorded was that she didn't she didn't need withdrawals. Mm -hmm. See, I, I I the spiritual component, you know, is essential here. Mm -hmm. I don't think it has to do, you know, we think, oh, well, your body just, you know, has different chemistry than mine. I'm not buying that anymore. Mm -hmm. I believe we have more authority than, you know, so part, I mean, part of this ministry is to, to, to share uplifting, positive, potential um, narratives. Mm -hmm. How you doing, beloved? I can use some of that. <laughs> I can use some of that. Thank you, beloved, for the bo um, book. I you got it? it? 
Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got it. I got it yesterday. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. It's it's like it's like the alien from that movie Aliens. You know, it goes on your face and then it sticks a tube down your throat. <laughs> you can't get it off. No one else found that funny. All right, I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> Come on, you guys, laugh. That was funny. How you doing, Jody? Whatever's going on. There's a civil war going on inside of my body and my mind. And it's really quite fascinating to watch. I've been calling out the insanity of the ego thought system for two weeks now, consistently, 10 days in a row. And it's been intense. And watching the shit show is Is really it. There's nothing, nothing's gone wrong and there's nothing to fix. We're to just watch it and welcome it. And there's a huge intensity to that. <laughs> um, one of the really great books that I'm reading right now is called No Bad Parts. And A Course in Miracles says that Ego is legion, Holy Spirit is one. And so ego is fragmented and separate. And so I find it very validating. Like it's very, it coincides with the teachings of the Course in Miracles. So it's really helpful to me to understand that there's all of these parts that are going to war. And I know using this new lens, it's all unconscious guilt coming up. And that's why like, there's nothing to fix, nothing's gone wrong. It's all happening for me. And so this week, starting last week, I've really just been setting intentions to consciously look at the fucking insanity that my ego thought system comes up with. And it's so completely bonkers and insane. And what Marcy shared, it, it coincides with that because one of my stories is this whole I'm a burden thing. And it's so insane. The more you look at it, the more you unpack it, it's so insane. Because like Mar Marcy said, when somebody reaches out to her, it brings her so much joy. So here I am struggling by myself, totally immersed in the ego thought system, feeling like such a burden, totally ignoring the fact that when somebody reaches out to me, it brings me so much joy. And so this ego thought system, it's not reality. It's just not. And so when you really finally start to see that for yourself, wow, it's a fucking game changer. So I was one of the people that blessed Marcy this week by reaching out. And you know what? It went from me, like I was, I needed to be pulled down off the cliff. Like it was, <laughs> Not that I'm actually going to act out on all of my impulses to kill myself. But there are definitely parts of me that are just so done with this insanity that I can't do it anymore. It's so fucking insane. <laughs> I, I just want to go. And so a couple of minutes into our conversation, it just like as soon as you start talking about it, as soon as I started talking about it, as soon as I can start to see it, I'm no longer in it. I'm seeing it. So I've been listening to a lot of Kenneth Wapnick videos. And he has this really, like, so it's so simple. I'm the decision maker. And I get to choose between my right mind and my wrong mind. And so life is just happening. I can't do anything about it. 
It's just a script, it's gonna run, but I constantly get to choose. Where am I putting my attention? What thoughts am I following? What thoughts am I feeding my energy to? So it's been a pretty intense week for me. Um, this new support call that I called really pushed a whole bunch of buttons. And wow, it got really intense. <laughs> it's, it's this calling out the ego thought system. It's intense. This is high level fucking stuff. And that's why no one's showing up. And that's okay because I'm showing up and there's nobody outside of me anyway. Jody, have, have you seen the elevator scene from the movie Revolver? I, I will I will send you the link. Yes, uh, my, my, my friend Laverne and I, um, whenever I called her with my 911, she did the same thing for me that you know, the others are doing with you. We always went back to the elevator scene from Revolver. Because the man's got the dialogue with his... I mean, David Hoffmeister was very clear. Someone says, when I wants to him, you know, isn't there anything positive about the ego? Well, he said, no, the ego wants you dead. And, and, and you're documenting for us what it's like to be on the bridge. That's why I record these. That is, that is more valuable to me than, than, than all the money, Jody, is to hear how somebody is in, in the dialogue itself to, to document, to share, to express, to expose the, 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 the mechanics of the, of the dialogue and, and, and very simply say, I'm not going to pay any attention to that man behind the curtain. Most, you know, what you just described is where all wars come from. I lost my whole family in the 1980s because of stories that weren't true. It wasn't, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be doing this right now. Mm -hmm. the, the stories you know what you described is 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 is, is it jody you you're, you're you're witnessing the the death throes and 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 and, and i'm 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 not gonna you know put it put it any other way i'm gonna call them out for what they are they are death throes of the ego thought system I mean, how many times do I have to say it? The closer we get to 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 a miracle, that that's that's where the ego is going to scream the loudest. You know, we can we can just sit around and say, you know, nothing's going wrong, everything's going right. But un unless we've got material to back it up with, it just becomes a platitude. You are backing it up with a direct hand experience of 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 the shrieking of the shrills. Mm -hmm. that you're proving to be ultimately not true. They're, they're, the, the Course in Miracles calls it a, a, a wisp of smoke, a wisp, a wispful cloud. These persons, people, people spend their entire lives, they build retirement accounts, they build insurance policies, they, 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 they formulate everything because they're, they're convinced it is a solid black wall. When, when you come on this call and describe that you are entering that darkness and discovering it's not solid, it's, it's penetrable, it's permeable, the further along you go, you realize it's not even penetrable and permeable, it's not even real. Each person's got to go towards that which they fear the most. And no one's going to do it unless they're pushed. <laughs> All of us here got pushed. This is so beautiful. Otherwise, we just try and improve things. Fine. I keep Fine. catching. <clears throat> I keep catching my uh, dream character rearranging the chairs on the Titanic. 
there's and there's nothing wrong with that. We have to it's rearrange been, them and rearrange them until the, you know the water reaches uh, you know E deck. You know that's when the the, and the water will reach E deck. It's really one of the things that is helping me to wake up. Like it's all this is and it's so fascinating that it's all happening for me, because the crazier the ego gets, the more I can see it. And each time I catch myself rearranging the chairs, I see it. And so it's all happening for me. What what you're describing is an every is an all you know eight billion humans. For most eight billion humans, it is so far below the surface that it's 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 under lock and key. It's called the subconscious. So when when I get to meet somebody, you know who for whatever reason you know has has opened up Pandora's box, it it's it can only lead to to a uh, a free flow. Uh, uh, it can only return us to our natural state. It cannot be otherwise. But but it's it's hanging on during a storm, and you're unbelieving the storm itself. I don't, I don't want to attend. You know, no no offense to Course in Miracles. You know, to study groups, but I don't want to attend any more study groups. I want to attend people who have, have studied it, have put it down, and are, and are, are now letting it do them. And, and this is what the Course in this is, I kind of made a little bit of teaser to Greg because Beloved sent him a Course in Miracles group. And I said, put it away. <laughs> ACIM, removing the blocks to God's love, that ego which separates us. I'm not re yeah from God. I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm just pointing out to Jody that she's living it, and she stopped talking it. You know, stopped talking about it and started living it. You know, I, I remember Carl Maxwell. You know, 25 years ago, he said, "Those who can do, and those who can't teach." You know, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that, but that's why we're not. I know you heard me. Good work. I gotta go, guys. I'll talk to y'all next week. Bye, amigo. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, Greg. I'm really proud of you. Thank you. Talk to you all soon. I love how simple this is. Like, it's really just that simple. It's And this is why it's so hard. No, it is. Right? Because we're removing the ego. It's the ego which blocks us. And so we're we... removing the ego, and that's why it has the death throes, because it doesn't want to relinquish control. I don't know if we're removing it either. I, I'm sorry, I'll just, you know, slap me if, if I'm nitpicking metaphysically here. I, I think, I don't think anybody can make this happen. I, I, I truly believe that it's going to come up when it's supposed to come up in, in, in a, in a pre-written script for each person. And, and this happens to be our the labor pains of, of ours. Marcy just raised her hand. If you're doing something to become enlightened, you've missed the point. That's exactly what I just said at the beginning of the call. And, you know, when you were talking, Kenneth, it just um, made me think of something that came to me in a meditation this week. And that was um, the light of the world is the opposite of darkness. And in truth, the light that you are has no opposite or opposition. So we call it light, but it's unlike anything. You simply are and God is. I feel like that's sort of what you're talking about. Like I've told I've told this group, you know, countless times. I am not enlightened. I am I all day, all week long. I, I stomp around. I, I slept. I do wiring. I do plumbing. I, I've got grievances. You know, I I I just like Jody. You know, I don't respond. I don't I try not to react. Sometimes, like you know, a few things you know slip out. You know. I've I've learned through 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 you know fifty six years to patiently trust, and 
you're right because Marcy, what what you just described is is on the other side of the the, the trust and allowance. It's 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 not rocket science. It's 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 the only thing that's true. But you know, we've, we if if I were to react to any of these voices in my head, you know, I would be you know creating drama and karma that would just keep me in the amusement park for a little bit longer. No one could stay there forever. Those of us who come on this call, we can't stay in the amusement park. We've ridden all the rides. Uh, you know, we're, 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 we're tired. There's no more cotton candy. You know, Diet Coke and, and, and popcorn, it's, 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 it's all been experienced. You know, those of us who come on this call needed contrast experiences. The other thing I want to say is, you know, I don't know, but it, I, I can't make a general statement, but a contrast experience is a necessary ingredient for awakening. We don't get here because we do things right. We get here by the netty netty approach because we've exhausted everything that doesn't work, which is nothing works. Bingo and bullseye. Allowing. This is opposite of the entire world. But those of us who come here, you know, uh, you tried all the pharmaceuticals, tried all the addictions, have tried everything in the world to. Uh, some, something's not right here. As Helen Shuckman and Bill Thetford said, there's got to be a better way. Jody's got a big smile on her face. Jody, you've got the most beautiful story in the world, you know. I, I'd be careful who I shared it with, you know, um, not that you, didn't, you were in any danger, but, you know, some people might think, oh, my God, this woman's got problems. No, she's she's doing earnest homework and a Ph.D. in, in, in self-awareness and enlightenment. And, and, and this is, you know, her. Um, this is her fact finding, you know, research. Same with Beloved. Beloved, you have the most beautiful story of what doesn't work. I love the amusement park. That's hilarious. Thank you. I needed a chuckle. <clears throat> I mean, we got to get real here. How else to get real unless there's a, a, a good old fashioned parable that didn't work? I mean, ultimately, none of them work. Everyone's going to die. So, so no parables, not a single parable is ever going to work. But, but wouldn't you rather it stop working, you know, while there's still time to, 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 to watch it and discover what is true? Truer. I mean, none, none of us could ever really absorb the truth because it would blow up in about a millisecond because the only truth is love. But but let's get a flavor of it now. Let's get a taste of it now. Not in spite of our collapse, but because of it. Not in spite of our so-called failures, but because of our failures. I mean, this is the reason like so few people ever get a 12-step program. So few people will ever get sober the first time. You know, a good treatment center counselor, you know, would stand up there and say, um, sorry, folks, there's a hundred of you in the room. Would three of you, you raise your hands? Three people raise their hands and said, that's how many of you are going to be able to stay sober. The rest of you ain't going to work this time. This is your first time. Because what, what it's asking us to do is, is, is just what Jody's been documenting. We're going to have to face the screaming, shrieking, go towards it. That's where the magic is. Just keep at it. So what's in, in, in the 12 steps? Keep coming back. It works if you work it. Talk about, you know, Marcy, talk about simplicity. 12-step <laughs> programs based on simplicity. But I had a I had a wise life coach tell me, 15 years ago, she just said, 
She said, the only thing that's ever going to work for you, Kenneth, is if you get a higher power. She said, I can't do anything for you. She said, we're going to just work on getting you a higher power first. And she was right. You know, I was, I had, a, I had a job in college. Anybody remember bank tellers? <laughs> Jody might not, she might be too young. <laughs> bank tellers. I, don't know, I, I guess I still go to a bank and stuff. Anyway, I was 21 years old and perfect job for a 21 year old. And, you know, just sit there and you know, to take deposits and, you know, you hand cash checks. But, they had this looping tape in the background. Remember the, the elevator music? They would loop songs. Uh, ele ele I call it elevator music, but for a bank, it would be applicable. You know, you have to have nice, soft, soothing, you know, background music, you know, so they, and one, of, and I, I was, I had just begun the litigation with my father, 21 years old. That's, that's, that's way over the head of a 21 year old. As a matter of fact, you know, it was about I was about ready to go on psych meds at this time, just about because I was I was about to go bonkers. And that looping music had a specific song, which which I will never forget because I listened to that song every single day at work for nine months. Same song. Every generation blames the one before for all of their frustrations. Banging at their door. Marcy's doing this. I don't have the whole script of that song. I think there was any accident there. I mean, I was listening, asking myself at age 21. I'm in litigation with my father. And why is this song playing at the bank every single day for me to hear? I want people, I want people to, to hear the message that there are no accidents, that everything is being pre-planned. And it's being pre-planned for our benefit. Now, now it wasn't, you know, the the, the I don't know how does this song say it loud, say it clear. It's too late when we die to admit we don't see eye to eye. There was no resolution between my father and I. I mean, it, it was written in the script. There was there were there were going to be attorneys on both sides, but what that song was saying is you're going to have to find it in your heart to forgive him, kiddo. Because that was the song. I'll put it in the description line of the YouTube video. Didn't say it would take 30 years. Marcy's got your hand raised. That just reminded me. Um, I uh, am really grateful for this group because, uh, beloved, um, I, in one of the earlier Zoom calls, she was sharing how she listens to... Um, Nook and Corrine in the mornings for um to do her course lessons. And so I looked them up. It's Course in Miracles Unpacked, something like that. The other day, um Corrine said that Christ gave her a prayer. And it just so resonates with what you were just saying about hearing these songs. And the prayer is really simple. It's I and you, you and me, and we and him. It, you know, took me until my 50s and listening to David Hoffmeister over and over and over, have to repeat, follow the signs. I Everyone thinks it's, you know, follow trail of breadcrumbs. That's not, I mean, that's just, that's just the way I see it. But I got it from David Hoffmeister, follow the signs and the synchronicities. I had no idea. You know, I, I was sitting with George. This is 2023. We were together one, probably about 12 years ago when George and I were together. We were living together at a house that I own in Clackamas. Wonderful man, you know, for, to put up with me, you know, 12 years ago. That, that man was an absolute angel. And so we'd go to the bookstore together, you know, because we both were, you know, you know, seekers. 
uh, he may it was he was ten years older, so I, I truly believe he was more evolved. And, and uh, you know, don't correct my metaphysics, please. Anyway, but we would bring the books back, and I would sit in my chair, and he would sit on the sofa. And, he would kind of like, he could feel me across the room when I, I was, because I'd get to these self-help books that had, you know, encouragement, stories, encouragement, but they would get to the last chapter and they would say, now turn it over and meditate. Take that book and I would just huck it. Give me the next book. I'll do anything, but I will not turn it over and I will not meditate because, you know, I kept running into that higher power, you know, I didn't believe that there could be a loving God. It, it really does come down to that simple. You know, the reason I keep referring back to the 12 steps is Bill W. tried in, in, in for, for the entirety of his life since, since beginning AA to, to implore these men, you know, even says, you know, we, we, we beg of you to be fearless and thorough from the beginning. No one among us has been able to make um, I can't I can't quote it, but but I beg of people to just like that 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 couch I'll say Holly, you know, 12 years ago, she said, let's get a higher power first. And I can understand where some of us, you know, have real difficulty with that because I was with the I, I was, you know, conversing with a I, I was conversing with a fundamentalist um earlier in the year rather curious because I hadn't been around that for a long time. And he explained to me how there was a judgment day and Jesus was going to turn and say, I don't know you. Jesus was going to turn his back on some people. And I, I, I listened and, you know, I let him have this, whatever he was having. And, and I left and I realized that was, that was what I grew up with. So now, now I see the bigger picture. That was the indoctrination that said, well, if, 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 if that's, if that's the, the, the God that's being uh, peddled, then I'll have to figure it out on my own. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I went on that vision quest. Uh, because I, I, I can't rely on a historical story anymore. Those are training wheels. Each person's got to get on their knees and, 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 and cry out for that hand in the dark or those hair bands on the grass. Jody's done that. Marcy's done it. Beloved's done it. Bill W. was imploring the men to come in to his 12-step program and get on their knees. And some of it's going to be harder if, if we've been told that Jesus is going to, you know, turn away you know i'm not saying there's not religious trauma you know otherwise most of us probably wouldn't have gone on site that's whatever trauma is dealing with i'm saying that when i got on my knees uh, resources like george and, and countless others they didn't fix it or take it away but they sure as hell supported me through Same for everyone here. We've all got stories that we can't explain where the support came from. And I'd rather we not be able to. And unless life delivers a curveball, how are we ever going <laughs> to? I don't know. My well, grandfather. I do. I do. Sorry, I do. I got an I know mind, and my mind knows everything. And I've got a million voices in my head telling me right now all of the answers. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally insane. I know it's insane. It's totally insane. That's why I, I know. I know everything. I know all of the answers. I know all of the answers. Yeah, and then and then you put put a, a, a you know I, I did too. I'm I'm a bright guy. You know I got a master's degree in architecture. Woo woo. You know um, so, you know you know who the real bright one was. You know who the you know who the genius was. It was Forrest Gump. 
he was too stupid to have an I no mind. But we all know how the movie goes. And not only did he manifest everything he needed when he needed it and, 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 and more to share, but he also had an open heart. Yeah, I see him as just being guided. He didn't use his mind because he huh, didn't really didn't have, have one. So he just was a, just allowed himself to be guided. Uh -huh. No judgment. No. Uh, and he didn't know what any of it was for. No. He didn't claim. He didn't claim to know what any of it was for. I'm, what, what I'm really grateful about that movie is they showed his relationship with his mother, Sally Field. She loved him. My, my parents were dysfunctional. I, I'm, I've never, you know, kept any secret about that. My parents loved me. They were batshit crazy. But I got love. what passes for love. I mean, the ego can't love. The ego can't love. This is why we're all gonna to be tortured because we don't know what love is. So if you think you know, as an ego, you love somebody, you just really is just a smoke screen because the ego can't love. and it's really hate. That's hard. That's a that's that is that is the crux of why it's torturous for the ego to be on this path of truth. I mean, I'm tortured right now as a Reina. I'm being tormented and tortured in my mind. Um, with all the truth and facing it head on because you have to go through it and see where you this calls for a radical honesty radical honesty very hard to access where could that be true you mean I don't love my three daughters? You mean I didn't love my wife? You mean I, I don't love you guys? The eagle cannot love. Because it can't know God. So this, like Jody's describing the death rolls, is this identity that I'm so immersed in, that's not me. Rearranging the things on the Titanic, trying to feel better, nothing, nothing. There's no panacea, there's no, I can't find anything to feel better. I mean, whew, sleeping and waking is horrible. Right when I'm going to sleep, all the shit comes from before I wake up, all the shit's cause just, man, I've been in bed. I can't even get out of bed. I mean, it does get physical. You know, I'm having compassion for everybody who says they have effects off of tapering and stuff like that. I'm just saying, don't, you don't have to have it from drugs. You know, your whole fucking body's a manufacturer of drugs if we want to get to it. But this, this radical honesty and not judging well, the ego judges. So, of course, if you caught up and you and you don't remember that, you've just beaten yourself up for all the honesty you're trying to get to, <laughs> right? And it's just a mess. But like you said, Kenneth, you can't give up. You got to keep coming here. I'm sorry I was late. I, I don't know. Time got away from me. I, <laughs> I didn't realize I was late because I come here. This is what I'm coming to. I am keep coming back here for help.
I'm coming here for help. I am smiling because now I've got in this one recording two documented uh, firsthand experiences with the transversing of this very sacred bridge and the mechanics. Marcy's raised her hand, so maybe she's going to share some of hers. It's, it's going to look different in each person's a highly individualized curriculum. Love it. I, I don't love that you're suffering. No, I, I wish I wish it were different. I, wish, I don't know if I wished it was different. No, I don't love your suffering. I love your emerging. And that's how I get to, to witness this. To, I'm witnessing an emerging. Out of, no, you're not emerging out of a dream. You're emerging out of a nightmare. Let's be clear on that. If you were a dream, who the fuck would want to emerge? But what's on the other side? We go back into the, we go back, of course. But we go back into, we don't go back into a nightmare. We go back into a happy dream. Let's chop wood, carry water before. Let's chop wood, carry water after. But afterwards. Yeah, what I love is that no, there, you know, even the eagle can't deny the logic that everything I accumulate here, I can't take it with me where, you know, it, it's just, it's just not forever. I mean, we all know, like, you know, this 3D world, how the script goes, how it goes. We do everything not to, to know that. We do everything to live each day like there's a hope for a different ending. But what keeps me going is that who I truly am, the Holy Son of God, even when I transition from this form to the next, what I've achieved here goes with me. That's not what you can see. This is what this is why it's worth doing this work because you don't it's not wasted. It's not like you start over again from zero. We're doing this work to wake up. When I reincarnate again, I'm going to be that much more woke, more closer. This is this is why we keep doing and cultivating peace, cultivating kindness, cultivating the things that are non-tangible, the, the things that are eternal of God, truth. This is why I keep going and I can, and, and when the eagle does the backlash, Reason tells me, oh, well, I already know you. I done read the book 20 times. I done been to the amusement park on every goddamn ride. You can't fool me again. I get sucked in emotionally. The turmoil, that's what's going on now. Just the turmoil of it all. The internal, you can't tell looking at me, I can't see. <laughs> I can't put a finger on it, but it is like the Civil War. Yeah, Jody. But the Civil War, the ego loves the war. So it's not even, I don't want to make it like it's between the, the Holy Spirit doesn't fight. The, who we truly are is just waiting for us to stop, get off of that playground, amusement park, come over here. And it's like, you ever tried to pick cellophane off of the, the new piece of thing and you just can't get it off. You, you're just trying to, that's how it feels to me. I'm like trying to, that's not, that's not you. Come on. Get, get, now watch it. Watch this. Watch without judgment. That's the big thing without judgment. That's how you can tell how far you are from knowing what love is, how you can't stop judging. Judging just shows you how much you identify with the ego, even if you're not honest enough to see it in yourself. And the judgment can be, of course, of you. 
which is, I think, the worst. Most of us, unless we're really mad, but most of us are the worst on ourselves. Unless we really have a real good judgment on somebody else. But So that's really, that's how I feel, this um, separating and watching. And it's not, I can't do it. I am thick in it. Doesn't feel good. I can't do nothing. And and that's even more frustrating because I wish I could, if I could take a pill, I would. But I already know where that leads. I'm not going to do it. If I could take a drink, I would, but I don't want to do that either because I already know that, you know. So go through it. Uh, acceptance, working on that. What is, you know, and, and I know it's I'm always behind the eight ball. So I don't have to do anything. Right? There's nothing to do. I'm I'm glad you brought that up because that's how I want to end the recording. You guys can have the Zoom room for as long as you want, but I've heard it over and over and over from the Course in Miracles. You need do nothing. Which is I mean, if you want to talk about something that's been misquoted. You know, people use that to misquote all over until Keith Kavanaugh explained to me how it is to be used. Keith, I finally heard it from him. He, I guess maybe he got it from Ken Wapnick. Who, who knows? But I, that's all that matters is that I finally heard it. Is that when, when, when this stuff comes up, basically just saying Jesus was telling us to allow it and trust it. That's, that's, that, that's what I've gotten out of this whole Zoom call is... is Jody and Marcy and beloved and Kenneth are at a point where we we are allowing it. We have to, and what's coming out of us is is coming through us, which is why Marcy and I and maybe the rest go back and listen to what was being said. It certainly wasn't coming from this brain. <laughs> I'm going to wrap up the recording. Anybody want any, Jody? I saw you want to got your CIM book. Was a, a a quote you wanted to share with us to, to wrap this up? Well, I just Keith Cavanaugh is one of my favorite teachers right now because he just the way he says it is so perfect. Only in welcoming of the darkness can you know yourself as the light. Okay. Um, and so welcome can you message that to me because that, that I, I might have enough room to make that the title yeah so as we welcome this darkness we recognize that we are that which welcomes it because the ego can't welcome it the ego judges it so when you're judging you're an ego and so it is in the welcoming that you know yourself as that which welcomes. It's so simple and it's so fucking hard. Yeah, and yeah. we just spent the last 50 minutes documenting what it looks like. What a privilege and an honor that, that we ended on that. We didn't begin on that. We ended on it. We began with the mechanics of what it looks like in each person's story. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, beloved. And thank you, Marcy. This is Kenneth Price on Sunday, November 12th for our Sunday morning Zoom call, psychiatricsobriety.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, please leave your comments below even more than leaving your comments. Please join us on a Sunday morning. Um, I'm at a loss for words, and that's a good thing. So God bless, and may the force be with you, and see you next week.